What's up YouTubers, Johnny DIY here. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to fix an oven that won't heat or light by replacing the oven gas igniter. If you guys are new to my channel, please do me a favor and click the subscribe and the notification bell so you can get all my new videos. Alright, let's get to this one. So we're going to be working on an older Kenmore today, but it's going to be the same process for any brand, whether you have a Samsung, Maytag, GE, Whirlpool, LG, KitchenAid, or Frigidaire. So if you go to your cooktop and you go ahead and turn that on and you have a flame coming out and it's lighting up as normal, then you know you don't have a gas issue. The oven's just not working at all. We'll go ahead and open the door up. Let's go ahead and remove the racks. We'll go ahead and remove that bottom lower drawer. You just pull that out and then lift it up a little bit and pull it out more. Now this is optional, but it makes it a whole lot easier is we'll go ahead and take the door off. You just go ahead and put it down all the way. Now most stoves are gonna have a little hinge clip that you're just gonna get your flathead screwdriver and go ahead and gently press it up to unlock it on both sides of the hinge. And then you'll put the door in the higher position like this. And you're simply gonna pull up to remove it. Now let's go ahead and remove the tray on the inside of the oven. Sometimes that'll just pull out simply or sometimes you may have little screws. This one just has little hand tightened screws in the back. And lift up and pull out that tray. Now the igniter should be located right under this cover. It looks like it's just held in by one quarter inch screw. Go ahead and take that out. Should lift up, pull out. Now here in the back is our oven igniter. Now this is different than the older style gas pilot lights that would just have a pilot lit all the time. This uses an electric coil to heat up and then to light the flame. Now to test this, turn on your bake function and it should light up. If it doesn't light up, you know it's for sure broken. But if it does light up, that doesn't necessarily mean it isn't broken because when these fail, They'll just light up, but they won't heat up enough to actually light the flame. These igniters are the most common problem that break all the time. It looks like this one, one of the wires actually got shorted out and burned out on this back plate. So I know it's for sure this. Okay, so before we start working on it, let's go ahead and pull out the stove a little bit. Gently, don't pull it out too far now, because of the gas lines. Now if we come back behind the stove, we can go ahead and turn off the gas valve if you have access to it. What you're going to want to do is just turn that 90 degrees and it'll be off. When it's 90 degrees to the gas pipe, that means it's off. When it's parallel, that means it's on. And then also we're going to unplug the electrical power cord. <coughs> now we can go ahead and remove the igniter. Now if you look, there should be two small screws. They're almost impossible to see on this one, but they're underneath right here. So on this one, it's being kind of a bugger. I think I'm going to have to remove this. That should do it. All right, there we go. Took a little doing to get that last one out in this itty bitty tiny little quarter inch wrench. Now if we come under where our drawer was located, we're going to access the back. Now sometimes there may be an access panel right here held in by a few screws that you'll have to remove. You should be able to see the wiring now. There should be one wire like this held in by a wire nut. We'll go ahead and unscrew. Okay, now here's our old igniter. I went ahead and just spliced that wire where it was burned off. We'll go ahead and save that as a spare. Now here's our new one. You want to be careful handling these igniters. They're quite fragile. But there's two different styles of these. This is a round one and then there's a flat one which is more of a square shape. I'll go ahead and put links down in the description to both types of these as well as the tools and supplies I used today for you guys. But it's best if you go ahead and put your model number in as well when you're searching for these just to be sure because they do have different connections on the end so it makes it a little easier if you get the specific one. If you do have your manual still you can go ahead and check that and you can get the actual part number from that as well. Now to prevent the same thing from happening I'm going to take the new one and I'm going to twist these wires and braid them together so there's no chance of it accidentally hitting like it did before and burning it out so i'm just going to twist them like that so when it goes down below they'll be nice and tight together and i also wanted to mention don't touch the inner coil of the igniter that can lead to premature failure it's a lot easier on the square or flat ones to end up accidentally touching it but we're going to go ahead and just feed those wires back down then we'll go ahead and put those two screws in this plate right here and they go into this plate right here We'll tighten them down. I want to make sure the wiring is going straight down through the hole and there's no chance that it's going to end up hitting the sides like the last one. And reattach the flame tube. 
There we go. Now we're gonna come underneath and those two wires that were bare wires that had no connections on the end. What we're gonna do is we're gonna twist these two together in a clockwise direction. You can use your electrical pliers to help do that as well. And you're gonna take the special wire cap that's heat resistant and you're gonna twist that on. You're gonna twist that the same direction clockwise until it tightens down. And then we'll take the other wire with the connector. We'll plug that in. Uh-oh. Looks like it's a little too short. I'll go ahead and cut that connector off the old one. And then we'll expose a little bit of the wiring on the end. Taking our wire strippers. Pulling off the insulation. Unbound those wires. Fan them out a little bit. We'll connect that one with the connector to the plug. Cut the connector off the igniter coming down. And we're going to do the same thing to these two wires. Twist them clockwise and put a wire nut on them clockwise. Okay, there we go. And then I'm just going to go ahead and tuck the wires in the back so they don't get hung up on that bottom drawer. Okay, now we can go ahead and test the igniter. We're going to go ahead and turn the gas back on. So we just twist this valve till it lines up parallel with the gas pipe. Plug the power cord in. Good. Turn on our oven. And the glow plug is working. See if it lights up. All right, so it is working. Perfect. Cut this off. Now we can button it back up. We'll slide that flame plate back in. Tighten that down. Put that bottom cover back in and it actually goes in and you lift it up and slide it into the front. Put those two little thumb screws back in. There we go. Now we can go ahead and push our stove back in carefully. You're gonna wanna make sure that the gas line doesn't kink when you're pushing it in. Slide that bottom drawer in. Just lift up the front. Drop it in and slide it in. Put our racks in. And we can put our door back in. It just slides on the hinges. And then you're gonna open it back up. And if you have those little hinge locks, then you're just gonna lock those back in on each side. And you can go ahead and close it. All right, and that's it guys. Hopefully you found something in this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, uh, subscribe and click the notification bell so you can get all my new videos. I'd appreciate that. Thanks for watching Johnny DIY. Keep on doing it yourself, guys. Take care.